This video is sponsored by the Night Library. Symbiosis, a fascinating phenomenon found in nature, where two creatures of different species intertwine in either short or long-term biological interaction in one of three degrees. Mutualism, where both parties benefit from the interaction. Commensalism, where one part benefits and the other part isn't affected. And finally, parasitism, where one part predominantly harms, hurts, or exploits its symbiotic partner for their own selfish benefits. The symbiotic relationship that have existed between humans and animals, humans and plants, as well as humans and bacteria, are well known, understood, and documented throughout the course of thousands of years of mankind's history. However, one relationship that remains particularly sparse in terms of information is the deep connection that existed between the paranormal hunters of Louisiana and the creature known as the foul brutes, or as they would later come to be known, the stalker beetles. Initially discovered in August of what we assume to be 1896, documented for the journal of an inoculated hunter, who while unknown and unnamed, was known to be both a beekeeper and an entomologist. On his way to his 13th apiary, the hunter discovered a weird insect lying in the grass next to his bee farm. Thinking at first it was nothing but a leaf, he leaned down to take a closer look, but was suddenly caught off guard as the insect spun its head around and looked directly at him. Immediately he was taken afoot by its eyes, feeling some sort of connection. Black as void, the eyes of the insect were staring directly at him almost as if it was able to comprehend his presence and existence. Deciding to skip his trip to the bee farm that day, he remained close to the insect and studied it. The next day, he noticed that the combs in many of the beehives had strange lavas in them, lavas he had never seen before. Much bigger than regular lavas from within a beehive, these new additions to the colony had been pushed outside of the hive, most likely due to their size preventing the colony from functioning properly. However, the lava still thrived and were all being cared for by the worker bees. He speculated if the weird insect he had seen the day before had somehow bred with the queens and shared its genes with his colonies, allowing for the birth of these strange little creatures. He noticed that while staring at the lava, he felt the same odd connection as he did with the insect the day before. A weird but wonderful sensation of losing himself within them. Enthralled with his new discovery, he decided to move all of the large lava into a much more suited living space which would accommodate their rather large size. He noted that this highly accelerated their growth and continued to care for them, providing them with both wax and honey from the original beehives. The lava all seemed to thrive under these conditions, and began within hours to spin silk, nestling themselves within thick cocoons. Ecstatic with excitement over his discovery, and what would reveal itself from within the tiny envelopes, the beekeeper decided to name this new species, Foul Brood based on their dark color resembling something stricken by the seas. At the end of August, barely two weeks after his first encounter with the strange little insect in the grass, the beekeeper would spend every waking hour observing the cocoons. Fascinated by their growth and size, he was unable to take his eyes off of them even but to write for a brief moment, and then it finally happened. They hatched. A heartened carapace revealed itself, then feelers, 
legs, and finally the eyes. A dark, endless void was staring directly at him. They had gotten bigger and had a glossy outer layer to them. The creature chittered, curiously observing him. Surprised by its appearance, it looked nothing like its parents, not the bees, nor the insect, except for the deep black eyes. Such a wonderful, magnificent little being. He would name this particular beetle the firstborn, the very first of his species, unbeknownst to anyone but him. Most surprisingly, however, was the feeling it got when he was staring directly at it, or rather, when it was staring at him. Within its eyes, he felt himself staring back at him. He could almost sense his own silhouette in a mesmering pulse, a pulse he could hear in his ears, a sensation he felt throughout his entire body, an amazing sensation. What a wonderful feeling, even if a bit terrifying. Before we move on, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, The Night Library. If you, just like me, are into Hunt Showdown, you might find this interesting. Red Hunt is an upcoming comic book series created by The Night Library and funded through Kickstarter. The creators Daniel and David have made it their mission to create a comic book inspired by the Hunt Showdown universe. This involves a western setting with guns, hunters, monsters and a lot of blood. And you can read the very first episode of the comic book for free directly from their Kickstarter. So if you're a fan of Hunt Showdown, I highly recommend checking out Red Hunt and consider supporting their cause as I think it's an amazing initiative. I have left a link for their Kickstarter in the description below, so go check it out. As I mentioned, the first episode of the comic is available for free. And with that said, back to the story at hand. Worried about his sanity, he looked at the other cocoons. He wondered if this sensation of seeing and observing himself would be amplified if he looked at, or if several of these creatures were looking at him at once. Further research had to be done. Almost a month would pass, and the foul brood would grow bigger and stronger, just like their parents, the bees. The creatures had collectively chosen a queen, the firstborn. This led to a unique discovery in the species' internal communication. As a hive mind, the queen and every other member of the species were connected through sight. Using this otherworldly media, the queen would talk to each and every one of the beetles, and the beekeeper revealed in his journal that as he looked into the eyes of the newly appointed queen, he suddenly saw himself observed through hundreds of eyes. Unfortunately, just as he suspected, it almost cost him his sanity as his brain tried to decipher the visual inputs of more than a hundred eyes. Managing to gain control of himself and break sight, he was left dazed and mad, dealing with sensory overload for several days after. However, by the skin of his teeth, he had avoided going insane and had to find a solution to avoid permanent madness. Through slow and methodical research, a breakthrough was made and he eventually found out how to avoid looking through the hundreds of eyes of the entire colony. All he had to do was make a physical connection with one of these small creatures before using sight. Through direct contact, the two would somehow tune in to one another, forming a close bond that would make him see only through a single pair of eyes and ultimately avoid going mad. Having finally solved the problem of bonding with only one of the creatures at a time, the beekeeper decided to bring the foul brutes into the bayous. Their symbiotic relationship allowed him to avoid dangers lurking ahead, saving himself from death which would often be at the cost of the bug's life. However, losing one of them to avoid death was a worth that far outweighed their cost. Curious by the potential of these species, 
The beekeeper was certain he could make them more versatile, more resilient, more useful, and with this in mind, he began planting new lava throughout the bayous. With the potential crossbreeding of other insects, different biological factors and environments, the beekeeper couldn't help but wonder what other variations of this little creature the future could possibly hold. Hey there, Asmet here. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the story. As always, a big thanks goes out to the Hunter's Lounge show on Patreon, specifically Jim and Bob, Corey Peterson, Derivative, Kai, Goose, Doc Powell, and Bone, Gene Lucero, Slip, Stas Biestic, The Wizard of Cover, Bubonic MCCC, Ape Benavides, Ghosty, Jane Doe, Jose Gonzalez, Gashi Yuka, Nightingale Far, Sir Bottoms, Spooks, The Loaf of Bread, Tim Wright, Tom Hengst, and Ulf Jalström. If you want to support me as a creator and have a say in what the next video should be, consider signing up for my Patreon for as little as a single dollar a month. The link is in the description below. A big thanks to the Night Library for sponsoring this video as well. You can find a link to their Kickstarter below. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.